Exactly. So the theme that I'm speaking on today is about kingdom. And we can see that through the Gospels, Acts, Epistles, Revelation, the thing of kingdom leads us into invitation to live a life that is forgiven and restored. For it is through faith that we are restored and made one with Jesus. As followers, we are given the great commission to spread his word throughout the nation so that all may live a kingdom life. So in Matthew, which has the genre of ancient historical biography, the context, the historical context is that Matthew wrote to the Jewish church and to the Jewish people. I've chosen to look at Sermon on the Mount because this provides a um, kingdom, provides an instruction on what a kingdom life is. We have the Beatitudes, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The Beatitudes are the new righteousness that Christ offers us to live by. So Jesus offers a transformation of one's heart by grace and it's not through works and it's not through the law. We have salt and light, which asks us to live a life that is of godly wisdom so that our life can be an example to others, that we can live a testimony of the goodness of God. So Jesus offers through this message, the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 5 to 7, a transformation of one's heart by grace, not through works. The next one that I looked at was Matthew 9, verse 17. Jesus is the new wine. And what that means is that the old ways, the law, become replaced by grace, that we are set free from the works and our heart is transformed through the grace that has filled us through God's forgiveness and restoration. So we then go into Acts. Now the theme of Acts is... Lost it. Sorry, not doing well with this one. Um, okay, Acts, the genre in his historical biography. It was written by Luke to Theophilus in the eras of AD 63 to 70 to 85. And the theme in Acts is Acts 2, verse 21, which talks about everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. I chose to look at Acts 10 where Peter has the vision of both clean and unclean animals on a large cloth. And in that vision, God said to him, take, eat and kill this. Peter panicked. He couldn't eat this because the clean had become tainted by the unclean. It was also against the Jewish law to eat certain foods. But what God turned around and said to him was, nothing is unclean if I declare it to be clean. So what he was also saying was that not only is my word available to the Jews, it's also available to the Gentiles. My kingdom is available to them. So Jesus asked Cornelius to go through, to Peter to go through to see Cornelius. And in that visitation, Peter took other Jewish people with him. They were amazed at the compassion that God had for the Gentiles. He was, they were amazed that these people were baptised in the Holy Spirit, which then opened up the doors for them to see that, yes, God's word is not only for them, but their kingdom is also for others. Through the baptism of the believers, God then was able to release his word through to other nations. The next one is Ephesians 2, 6, which the genre is letter. The historical context is the church of Ephesus and believers in the Western Asia Minor area of about AD 60. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. We, Jesus is an example of kingdom life. It is through him that we see how we are to model our own lives. 
we are seated with Christ in the heavenly places through the forgiveness of our sins and being transformed by grace. God chose us and wants to be in relationship with us. Before the beginning of time, he knew us and his favour is upon his chosen ones. Revelations, the genre is prophetic apocalyptic literature, historical context. It is written for the seven churches in Western Asia Minor and for believers today. The verse I looked at was holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come and can be found in Revelations 4.8. This verse describes the eternal nature of God. He is our Lord God Almighty, who is worthy to be praised and glory, full of glory. He is the past, he is the middle, he is our future. He has been with us right through everything and his kingdom knows no end. There is no bounds to his kingdom. The New Testament theme of kingdom began with Jesus and a handful of followers. From there, we moved into Acts where the language of kingdom changed from being kingdom into salvation, to grace and to forgiveness. And these are all components of the kingdom. In Acts, we saw the breakdown of prejudice between the Jewish and the Gentiles and that the followers realized that God's kingdom wasn't just for Jews, but it was for all people. The baptism of the Holy Spirit ignited a fervour amongst the followers to take the message into the kingdom for all nations so that everybody would be saved. At all costs, the message needed to be shared. The complexities, there were complexities and simplicities that we needed to speak about. The public meetings in the early days were watched by the Romans, but at first they didn't seem to take too much notice. But then as the crowds grew and more people began to take up after Jesus and follow him, the limits then became around large crowds and about meetings. And then the meetings had to move into homes and so that became more secret. There were prejudices that the Jews and Gentiles had to overcome. There was also the persecution of the church as it grew. But the simplicity that came from the message of the kingdom was that the New Testament believers were able to live a life free from the law and live a kingdom life of new righteousness. In the Old Testament, God's chosen ones and others who chose to follow God lived under his favour. They'd lived by the law. They did not have the Holy Spirit and they did not have the Messiah but they had hope in his coming. This hope came down from the descendants of Abraham and through the messages that the prophets delivered to them. In the New Testament, with the arrival of the Messiah, we saw that the veil was torn and the old ways became new. The kingdom theme in the New Testament is about the new righteousness that God gave us through forgiveness and grace. It is about our hearts being transformed and made new. In Philemon, we see Paul reaching out to his old friend, asking him to free his slave, Onesimus, and allowing him to live a free life. And this is what Christ does for us. He seeks us out. He wants us to be in with kingdom with him. And he sets us free from our chains and makes us free. The book of Romans is a book of grace. Paul wrote Romans so that we would know God's grace and glory. No one can come into the glory of God without first receiving his grace and being filled with his righteousness. Works do not make us holy, but through God's compassion and righteousness, we receive his grace and glory. Paul wrote this letter to show us how to live a kingdom life 
in our community, in our families, so that all may come to know him. So through his kingdom, we are made heirs of the Father and our lives should be lived as a testimony of the kingdom of God. Thank you. Cool. That's good. Thank you, Narelle. Um, that was excellent. As you covered a lot in a reasonably short period of time, which was very good. Now let's have um, a question from somebody. At least one question from somebody. Okay, we're waiting for a question. Um, did you did you enjoy finding the context of everything? Like, um, loved it. I loved how you uh, it, every time you went to a new book, you described the context and everything like that. I really enjoyed that. I like that part too. So I was just wondering, do you like the the theology side and things like that? Yeah, like it was context. Yeah. Did you get a fresh okay. personal revelation on something when you did this study? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's not just about end times, it's really for now as well. Yeah. Good, that's, yeah. that's one of the main points, right? Getting something fresh ourselves. Yeah. Awesome.